Welcome back YouTube. Today I want to give you my equipment recommendations for home gyms along with a couple of tips for training at home. Now, while it'd be nice to have an endless amount of options on this list, I'm going to keep it to just three pieces of equipment that will minimize both expense and the space requirements to allow you to get a decent workout in if you're training at home. Of course, this video can't cover absolutely everybody's bases and backgrounds, but I'll be giving you guys the bare bones version for effective home workouts initially. Then if you do have the desire or space for more, I will talk about some of the extra add-ons I would advise towards the end of the video. Now, if you're after some effective workouts with minimalist equipment, I have already done quite a few on my channel here that I'll group up into a playlist and leave a link to in the description box below. I'll also be creating a lot more minimalist equipment tutorials such as dumbbell, resistance bands, and bodyweight only workouts. So do make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, so you don't miss out. And finally, if you're after a bit more structure to your training, I do post up a full home-based workout to go along with my gym-based workouts every single training day to my app and website, Gambaru Method. This is where you can follow along with my current training programs and my previous training programs as well. You can get a no obligation free seven day trial to check it all out, which I'll also leave a link to in the description box below. Now, before we get stuck into things, I am curious, how many of you are currently training at home? And if so, why? I trained at home for several years after I stopped working in a commercial gym back in 2015. Now initially I found it a little more challenging, more so due to the environment being different. One thing that I think a lot of people overlook is that it can often be hard to get motivated or into a good routine with training at home because they're so anchored to eating, relaxing, working or doing anything but exercise when they're at home. Whereas we tend to be anchored to do nothing but train or maybe scroll through YouTube, Facebook and Instagram when we're at the gym. So a quick tip that I do have to get past that if you are training at home and finding it hard to gain momentum is to find something, anything really, that helps you disrupt your pattern of home life when it comes to training time. So things like setting a schedule for dedicated training time, putting on specific pieces of gym wear or active wear, even though you're just going to be training at home, and putting on certain playlists, or even in some way disrupting the home environment by shifting around some furniture can all be helpful to help create this new anchor uh, for you when you come to spending time exercising or working out at home. Anyway, let's not go down that route too far as it's a whole separate conversation and let's keep this on track. Here are my three top recommendations for equipment for training at home. The first piece of equipment that I recommend everybody gets is a pair of adjustable dumbbells. The most challenging thing with home workouts is being able to get access to significant amounts of external resistance. And to have a full size dumbbell rack is unrealistic for many people with respect to space. Even having a barbell with plates is unrealistic for many people due to space as well. So I tend to recommend dumbbells a lot more as they're a lot more versatile. Now there are many options on the market that are extremely convenient with simple twist to change weights. We have many weights on the same pair of dumbbells and they take up very minimal amounts of space. While they might not be as pretty as standard dumbbells, they will get the job done. Now one thing you might want to look out for is the shape of the dumbbells and making sure that it's something that looks relatively comfortable. One thing that I overlooked in the past with interchangeable dumbbells was when you have those ones where you can take the plates off the, the pole and put new plates on, was that you wind up having those pointy ends from the dumbbells on either side of the dumbbells, which makes it very hard to set them up on your legs for things like dumbbell presses. But there are several other options on the market that don't have this issue. So just chop around a little bit and find what's best for you. Now, the next piece of equipment that I recommend is some sort of adjustable cable pulley. An adjustable cable station is going to give you the versatility to create better alignment for exercises like rows and pull downs when training back, as well as giving you more variety in resistance for the rest of your body. 
There are a lot of different options out there. Some are your typical pin load cable stations with weights, whilst others allow you to load weight plates manually onto the cable station. And some are complete bare bones that simply go through an eyelet loop from the hardware store, and others still loop over any sort of overhead bar, like a power rack or even like a tree branch. So if you do have anything like that available, you can just go down the route of using one of those bare bones options. Just keep in mind that if you don't have the space for it, you can, you can get away with just using resistance bands, which are extremely affordable and save you a lot of space. The only extra thing that you'll need is a door anchor of some sort to allow you to attach them anywhere in your home. I'll leave a link, another link, down in the description box below on how to make your own door anchor for setting up bands anywhere where you have a door using a sock, a strap or any piece of clothing, but you'll also be able to find proper door anchors easily enough online for a couple of bucks. Now, one consideration you wanna take in with bands is that the bands only really place stress on your body in the end range of motion. So a quick workaround for this that I like to use is to hit a fatigue point with a certain amount of band tension, then I like to increase the band tension by stretching it out further and continuing with partial range reps only, as that will create a more complete stimulus on the muscle in the range of motion that you weren't hitting in the first set. Now, finally, last piece is a suspension trainer of some sort, such as gymnastic rings or the TRX or whatever other brands may be out there. That's the third piece of equipment that I recommend for everybody. Again, it really comes down to what you have available for setup. If you have some sort of overhead anchor point, I recommend gymnastic rings over the TRX option, but if you have a doorway only, the TRX would be the best option. Similarly to cables, these will really open up your options for training with your body without having to rely a lot on weights. Body weight training can be made extremely effective and stressful enough to increase total body strength and size, and this is the perfect piece of equipment for it. So that's the bare bones basic, basics. A pair of adjustable dumbbells, a cable pulley of some sort, or resistance bands, and a suspension trainer of some sort. Together, that would be relatively inexpensive and it wouldn't take up a lot of space whatsoever. Now, what if you did have more space and wanted a little bit extra? What would I recommend then? The next two pieces in line would be an adjustable bench and a power rack with a barbell and plates. So it's like 10 bajillion more pieces of equipment. I actually place the adjustable bench higher on my priority list for most people than the power rack or barbell because again, we're looking at versatility and decreasing space requirements and the extra expense of extra weights and plates to load onto a barbell. The adjustable bench could very easily be replaced most of the times with typical household furniture, but there is going to be the odd occasion where it helps to have a bit more versatility and stability with angles and this is where the bench really, really comes in handy. Now, the real benefit to a power rack and barbell is the ability to, of course, start to add in a lot more load to your training. If you're a power lifter, you'll probably be placing this stuff a lot higher on your priority list as they're more essential to your sport. But for everybody else, the barbell and plates are merely one of the many tools that you can use to increase load and stress in your training. And given the space demands of having a barbell, a rack, and a bunch of plates, I place it much lower on my priority list. But of course, they really will help you with increasing the amount of stress you can place on your body. And if you had this along with everything else, in all honesty, I can't really think of much of a reason why you would really need to go to a gym. As much as you see me using machines in my own training, I use them for convenience and for the extra maybe five or 10% that they may bring to the table. But the reality is you can achieve a sufficient stimulus on your body without using them whatsoever and using body weight, cable, and dumbbell variations using everything else that I've already mentioned in this video. So there you go guys. What do you think? If you had everything on this list, would you consider going back to the gym? Or would you prefer training in the comfort of your own home? Let me know in the comments below and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you all for watching this all the way through and I'll see you all next time.